Horus the War Hamster by Forge World. Man, this paint job was one of the most annoying things I've done in a long time. I shouldn't say the paint job was annoying, just the entire act of painting this miniature. The miniature itself is annoying. Uh, I will go into details uh, into why that is throughout this video. Um, and this video is going to be a little bit patchwork, mainly because I just had so much difficulty with this figure uh, that some areas I just had to turn the camera off and really concentrate on painting it. We are starting off with the cape. Normally, I would start with the armor, the largest surface area. However, there were areas of the cape I wouldn't be able to reach if I did the armor first, and it's just not possible to do it in two separate pieces due to the uh, two-piece uh, wolf mane he's wearing. So, uh, painting it red, and I wanted a color of royalty for him. So, starting off with a mix of Vallejo model color 926 red, uh, mixed with Vallejo game color royal purple. To that previous mix, I've now added some game color gory red and covering up pretty much everything I just did in the previous step. Uh, basically, the previous step is just there to give the, the tone I want. Uh, it gives me a color to work off of, uh, give me an, uh, kind of pointing me in the right direction how I want to paint it, but not necessarily be part of the finished paint job. So I want to get some purple down. Uh, some of that purple will still show through in the final paint job in the deepest recesses, and some of that color will, uh, will bleed through. Um, but this color is the main recess color that we're using right now. Next, we add more of the game color gory red and proceed to start working up to the base coat. And this is going to be a lot, a lot of layers here for two reasons. First, we're working with red, which is a somewhat transparent color. Uh, it is difficult to work with, so I want to do it very thin. And also because we have this extremely large, uh, pretty much flat surface area, those those big folds require the paint to be very thin. So we're still a little bit thick here, but as we go on to the uh, upper highlights, uh, towards the base coat and upper highlights, we're going to be using very transparent layers. So this cape probably has in the range about 30 plus different layers of paint on it, each very, very thin. We've now worked our way up to the main base coat color, which is straight game color gory red. And this is mainly uh, where virtually most of the layering comes in, all those very thin layers. Something I have to tell you about gory red, I used to use it a lot. Uh, several years ago, but I stopped using it mainly because the color sucks. There's a few paints in the Vallejo range that are just horrible. Uh, specifically, Gory Red here, uh, I think it's Deep Green also in the game color range, and uh, I think it's Copper in the model air range, but there are a few colors in the range that th I don't know why, it just some fluke thing happens to them and the colors suck. Gory Red, after you buy it, it will solidify within a year. Everything in the bottle will just turn solid unless you like shake it every day or something. Uh, so I kind of stopped using because every time I went to use it for something, it'd be solid. I have to go buy another one, even though I didn't use the original one. So I did have a fresh bottle. Well, relatively fresh. It already started going solid. Uh, but I wanted to use it for this project because it does have a very unique richness to it. Uh, but however, because it has become solid, it also becomes more transparent as a lot of the pigment gets solidified in the center. So again, many, many translucent layers, and this paint is already partially translucent, which kind of helps in this situation, which means uh, it's going to be a little bit easier. I don't have to thin the paint as much to get the very smooth transition between the colors. However, it also means a ton of layers, as I said, 30 plus layers here, probably minimum, if not more. So not a color I recommend, but I really do. I like the color itself, but I don't like the paint. Let's put it that way.
once additional layers of gory red stops giving us any transition of color, it's time to move up to the next color, but this time adding Vallejo model color flat red to the gory red. Now, people always ask me, you know, what, how much should I thin my paints when layering? This is a perfect example why I can't give an answer to you because it depends on so many factors. The gory red, very transparent, uh, needs a little bit of thinning to it. Flat red, uh, much, much more opaque, one of the best covering red paints I've ever seen. So I've added red to the gory red, but now I have to thin it, the paint, the mixture of the paint, much more than what I had with the gory red on its own, if that makes sense. So I've added more opaque color, the paint needs to be much more transparent, much thinner. After doing one more step by mixing more flat red into the gory red, we finally moved on just to the straight flat red. Starting work on the upper highlights now. I don't want to go, well, it's it's a difference here. I don't want to go too bright with the cloak. I want to keep with that rich original purple that we had. However, uh, I'm going to glaze it a bit so we do need to bring the highlights up a bit more. Now, I'm not one to toot my own horn or say I'm a great painter or anything like that. Anybody watching should know that I don't do that. However, I want to point out here, uh, this is something you can easily dry brush and you don't get away with it. Uh, but people want to know how, you know, how do you paint without seeing any brush strokes? This is it right here. Do you see any brush strokes anywhere on this cloak? No, you don't because that's because there's 30 freaking layers of transparent paint on this cloak. So, that's how you do it, but it takes a hell of a lot of time and a lot of patience. Painting this cloak probably, uh, I can't remember if I did it all in one sitting or not, but it took an hour to 90 minutes of straight painting. So, yeah, you can do it. It's just, if, if you can't get it done, it's not happening for you. You need thinner paint and you have to take much, much more time to do it. Or you can dry brush and get it done in 30 seconds. It's up to you. Last thing to do are the final highlights. Uh, with red, of course, you do not want to over highlight it uh, to avoid it turning to pink or orange or yellow or some other color. Uh, for the highlights, I am adding some Vallejo model color sunny skin tone to the flat red and just doing two light highlights. As I said before, I am highlighting a little bit more than I normally would. Uh, but that's because I am planning on doing a glaze at the end, which is going to tone down the highlights a bit. So two coats of this, one kind of broad and then another one with much more sunny skin tone added just on the very edges, uh, the edges of the cape. And finally, finishing off with several glazes, a mix of red and purple Vallejo inks. Uh, first with uh, mostly red, and after a couple glazes with this color, uh, adding in more purple and placing that color mainly just in the recesses. Uh, this glaze will help tie all the colors together while bring the shades up a bit in tone and bring the highlights down, giving a nice universal soft blend. It'll also help hide any uh, little brush strokes or any imperfections that may be on the cloak. So uh, that is one area of the miniature now painted. Now we got to move on to all the others. Oh boy. Now we move on to his pet wolf and the next problem we face with this miniature. Uh, nice texture. Uh, calls for dry brushing, right? Well, the problem is we just painted this really nice cloak and if we dry brush the fur, it's gonna splatter all over the cloak. Uh, I already gloss coated the cape to give it some protection, but uh, yeah, dry brushing is a very messy process and it flicks paint everywhere. So we need to take a different approach to this. Uh, undercoated in some brown, I forget what, it's not important because the main color is actually uh, Vallejo, hang on, it's coming to me. Model color beige, that's it. So giving it a base coat of beige.
despite I just said we're not going to dry brush this, I am doing a tiny amount of dry brushing here, but you notice I'm doing it very carefully, and this is more of a uh, highlighting, much less a dry brush, more just placing some highlights on the miniature. So using Vallejo Model Color Pale Sand here just to add some more definition to the fur before going into the real paint job. So we are going to be painting this fur in reverse, starting off with the highlights and then repeating, using repeated washes, paint washes for the most part, uh, to paint in the recesses. So we're going to take this very bright, light color that we started with and darken it down and down and down until we get to the darker recesses. Starting off with Vallejo Game Color Leather Brown, uh, very thin, and we're just leaving the pale sand and beige on the upper highlight areas, uh, but the leather brown is going over a majority of the wolf. Um, we're using paint here rather than inks because inks tend to uh, fall to the recesses more. Paint is more likely to uh, stay. It's going to... We're going to have a wash consistency here, but it's, uh, it's still going to stay a bit more on the surface than the ink would, So, and because we want to shade everything here. We're not just... Uh, adding shade, we're also adding contrast. Our next wash color, slightly darker now, is Vallejo Model Color Flat Earth. And this is a, a very slow process, much like putting on the glazes or putting on washes. Uh, it's not necessarily just one coat tier, it's letting that one coat dry and uh, that leather brown dry and if it's not enough going back and adding a little bit more leather brown then once we keep adding it and there's no further results we move on to the next color which as I said is now flat earth so a couple layers of this before moving on to the next color and so on and so on. Starting to get much darker now. This time we're using a mix of flat earth mixed with Vallejo model color camo black brown. And you see smaller and smaller areas working into those deep recesses, uh, adding more definition to the fur as we go, and adding more than one wash if necessary. Our final wash is Vallejo Model Color Camo Black Brown uh, in the deepest recesses. Uh, much like the glazes or the, um, not the glazes, but the layering we did previously, sometimes we use it very thin and then we can thicken it up to a greater effect. Same thing's going on here, so I'd first use a thinner wash as a, a larger, broader overcoat and then use a bit thicker version if I want to get deeper in the recesses. And then finally we clean up by doing a very careful dry brush with our original Vallejo model color beige. Uh, kind of just to clean everything up, tie it all together. Um, again, trying to be very light here so I don't splatter it all over the cloak. Uh, the same wash, wash technique uh, works good on feathers as well if you want to try that. But uh, So there we go, we are now done with two areas in the miniature in this part of this video series. Hopefully. In the next part, we'll finish up. I hope so.